I suppose if we can't have the dressing room, nobody can. I came across this because I saw Aaron Gunn tweet this out. This is completely insane. Kids up to age 18 are not allowed to get changed in a hockey dressing room or shower at the rink because coaches may not automatically know what gender someone identifies with. This story from the CBC, minor hockey players required to wear bottom layer to dressing room or change in the washroom. Hockey Canada says new policy promotes inclusion and privacy for all players. Well, what is this coming down to? This is the whole idea that, you know, we have to be inclusive for uh, this tiny group of individuals that identify a certain way and want to push their will on other people. So everybody must bow, bend to their will instead of them going into a private uh, change room and changing on their own. Everybody else has to deal with this whole situation. <laughs> Obviously, yeah, great, great thing. It's early in the 2023-2024 uh, minor hockey season and many players and their parents are getting adjusted to a new policy from Hockey Canada. This being this new policy that you can't use the <laughs> the change rooms uh, to actually fully undress. This is not going to be allowed anymore. Now, the uh, Post Millennial also reporting on this. Hockey Canada instructs players under 18 to wear bottom layer in locker room or change in a bathroom stall for gender inclusion. And this is largely because I think everybody's just in a situation where they feel uncomfortable. They feel massively uncomfortable because of a tiny group of people that are, again, imposing themselves on on a, on a norm that's been the norm in society for the longest time, imposing on everybody. So because everybody feels uncomfortable, just shut it down, shut it down. Nobody gets to have access to these things anymore. Hockey Canada has adjusted its policy for, mi for minor league which states that the players under the age of 18 are no longer allowed to shower or get dressed in locker rooms due to new gender-inclusive guidelines. The policy demands that all minor hockey players wear a base layer when coming into the arena, a policy decision that made to, was made to promote the inclusion of trans-identified players to respect the privacy of boys and girls who might not choose to use their non-respective locker rooms. Hockey Canada spokesperson Esther Madzia said in a statement to CBC News, all participants have the right to utilize the dressing room or appropriate an equivalent dressing environment based on their gender identity, religious beliefs, body image concerns, and other reasons related to individual needs. This, this sounds all very contradictory. Gender identity, religious beliefs, body concerns. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's pretty pretty simple. Uh, you know, you have the the boys' room, and then you have the girls' room, and those are those are determined by the sex of the individual, not the gender uh, identifiers. These are the this is the sex. Uh, I don't know why we're making this. Um, we keep insisting to use gender language. Uh, it's the sex of the individual that is determined what what room to go into. But we want to mess this up and we want to get people confused. Craig Robertson, president of Halifax Hawks Minor Hockey, defended the policy update and said coaches can't always visually identify and automatically know what gender someone identifies with. So this just allows everybody to fit into that dressing room. <laughs> this is a cop out. This is, uh, you know, the, the coach is just saying, don't cancel me. I, I just don't want kids to be subjected to awful stuff in these in these what, what is essentially a safe place for these individuals. There's a safe space for kids, and I mean, we all make fun of safe spaces, but there are there are you know women's spaces. There are spaces for ch for children. There are spaces for boys and spaces for girls. And this is this is people intruding in these areas and, and we all we, we can all kind of see what's going on here and <laughs> just see this it isn't clear it, it isn't just about gender it's about everyone being comfortable robinson said 
Yeah, it's about people being comfortable and people are becoming very uncomfortable. Of course, quoting Aaron tweet here, Aaron, Aaron Gunn's tweet on in the article, it is completely insane. Now, where have we come to with all of this stuff? Can you bow to to this mob and and even, you know, get somewhere? Are you going to are you going to be appeasing them in doing this? Well, no, it turns out. Nope, you can't appease anyone dibs of TikTok pointing this one out saying if you're called transphobic you have to just accept it and you can't defend yourself because asking questions is also transphobic if you are told that something you're doing is transphobic it is not your job to try to prove that it's not you are going to mess up it is guaranteed if you are told information and you immediately reject it and go nope that doesn't fit my view of what transness means you are not going to be able to show up as an ally because all you're worried about is what you think and you feel about an experience that's not yours it's going to be uncomfortable it's going to be confusing and it's going to mean that you are going to have to evaluate how gender is seeped into society, how it has affected and shaped your life, how cishet normativity has affected your life. And just because we're existing in front of you does not mean that you get to ask or say whatever you want and that's supposed to be taken as a compliment. Questions can be transphobic, compliments can be transphobic. And so that's where it comes in where a lot of the work with being an ally actually has to do with our own individual reflections on how transphobic society has shaped the way that we think and live and treat people. We don't need allies who are trying to prove how good they are or who are asking for a pat on the back or who are trying to seem nice or who are worried about what they look like. We need allies who are willing to stand up for trans people and learn how to do that the best that they can. Right, so there's nothing you can do. Um, just submit. <laughs> this is where we're at. I'm sorry for laughing. It's just absurd. This is so absurd. You can't do any better. Now, a lot of people are suggesting, hey, why don't we have trans spaces? This would be perfect. It would be so suitable for people in the trans area. I mean, uh, the, the, the private washroom, you could always go change in the private washroom. And then that would be perfect for uh, this exclusionary group. And this is an exclusionary group. They want to have exclusive rights to a lot of things um, that they wouldn't uh, otherwise have. Now, this took place. Now, Ollie London pointing this one out. This is, <laughs> you know, a swimmer with uh, let trans kids play written on their arm. Ollie London uh, taking to Twitter to say or taking to X, sorry, to say transgender World Cup swimming category canceled. After not a single trans swimmer entered. What? So shocking. After an open category was introduced to help make sports fairer, trans athletes refused to participate in the Swimming World Cup and insisted that they demand, they, assist, they instead have demanded to compete in the women's category so they have a stronger advantage. Oh, wow. Hey, what do you know? Why is it that they're even going in these categories? And why why is it that there's not a lot of uh, trans men? I mean, when I say that, men, women who are transitioning to men, why is there not a lot of them clamoring to compete in the men's categories? Or, or is there? Leave a comment in the comment section down below. Tell me if I'm wrong. Is there a lot of them going into those men's categories and then just... Um, well, I, I'm sure they dominate. I sure, I'm sure that's that's the case there. The Swimming World Cup, due to begin in Berlin this Friday, introduced new rules for trans swimmers last year, banning biological males competing in the women's category unless they had completed their transition by age 12 and their testosterone was below a certain threshold, which I think is just criminal in itself. Uh, having uh, kids transitioning that that yeah, yeah no. Adults can do whatever they want in with their lives. I, I, I totally agree with that, but this, this that's just child abuse at that point. Anyway, this is the rule that they have put forward. However, in protest to the rule, trans swimmers are demanding they continue to compete against women. And not a single swimmer has entered the cup or the open category, leading to organizers <laughs> scraping the category, scrapping the category during an upcoming competition. The source from Sky News. Now, Ollie London, I think, would know a thing or two about this, being a trans, uh, a, a, tra a detransitioner himself, and writing a book about it called Gender Madness. Uh, he, he also was transracial at one point, and this is this is something that he went through um, because a lot of this was pushed on on children when he was growing up. You can be what you want to be. Being you know what you are is not good enough 
you need to change what you are. And I think that's really destructive for people. Now, uh, Gender Madness, maybe on the book club uh, in the future, who knows, and maybe even get Ollie London to come on the show and talk about this. But also putting out there uh, another story, another one from the Nuss guy, <laughs> just like the ridiculous of these images is crazy. Ollie London saying gymnastics Australia changed guidelines to allow transgender athletes to compete in the women's category for biological males to undress in locker rooms and showers. 93% of eight of the 800,000 Australians involved in gymnastics are under the age of 12. Under the, and we, we all know that there over over the long history of gymnastics, there's been scandal after scandal and, and allegation after allegation of pre predators entering this space. And you can absolutely understand why when you have 800,000 and a majority of them are all under the age of 12. Um, under the new rules, biological males will be allowed to compete in whichever category matches their gender identity, whatever they decided. And will be allowed to wear women's uniforms. They'll also be allowed to undress in women's locker rooms and in showers, regardless of their genitalia. The uh, director of Gymnastics Australia defended the decision, saying, Diversity ensures our sport is better for all involved. We want everyone to feel comfortable and supported as part of the gymnastics community. That's what it matters. It's just appeasing this small group of people at the detriment of everyone else. Now, this I, I bring this story up because it's so reminiscent to what's happening here in Canada. And in Canada, it looks like they're just trying to err on the side of caution. I can see that for sure with coaches just saying, don't get me involved in this. Don't I, uh, I just I, I, I don't want the battle. I just want to teach hockey. I just want to teach these kids how to play. And, you know, this tiny minority of, of people that are coming in are really upsetting the apple cart. And yes, uh, they want to protect children. So in, in doing so, now it's an issue where kids can't, uh, you know, have proper hygiene. They're going into these rooms and uh, and doing this. It was also in that article from the Post Millennial uh, here. If you, if you go to a minor hockey coach outlined the new changes to player the to players last week resulted in pushback from parents who cited concerns about parental height uh, sorry potential hygiene issues relating to having to wear sweaty gear and garments after practice. Robinson acknowledged their concerns but said it's a relatively small price to pay to ensure everyone feels included. Does everyone actually feel included in this or do they feel that they're being excluded from uh, the normal normativity, the things that we, we all had available to us for the longest time? And again, a, a small group are stripping us of these things from our society. Anyway, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think and we'll see you in the next one. Keep on trucking.